and I'm looking in a, like at them jet skiing and having a lot of fun. And suddenly there's a dude sitting in front of me, a nice, sweet, chubby boy. I said, "Hey, I, I said, why don't you jet ski?" He's like, "I'm too super scared." I was like, "Oh fuck, me too." <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, uh, "What's your name?" So he said, "Akash." And I said, "Where do you live?" He just did this, and the burjalaral was right behind him. And then he's like, "I need to go." So I said, "Okay, bye, see you." Then the moment he left, my friend, who was an asshole to me all this while, came running to me, and he's like, "Do what did he say?" He didn't say anything. Like we were just talking normal. He's like, "Do you know who that is?" I said, "I don't know. His name is Akash." <laughs> <laughs> he's that. I was like, "Fuck!" Hi guys, welcome back to This Is Not a Podcast. Uh, we have Fahim sitting over here. <laughs> what Fahim's a bottle now? <laughs> no, what do you mean? Hey man, Fahim. If you can't see Fahim sitting here, you're stupid. <laughs> And if you comment down below saying, "Oh, Fahim's not there," we will not watch this episode. Fuck you. You're also stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say. We have our uh, veteran player. <laughs> veteran player <laughs> who. Keeps coming and going, coming and going <laughs> with us today. So since Gai was there today, we'll be talking about cars, watches, football, football. No, but she knows football. <laughs> we'll not be talking about anything which is <laughs> Gai's area of interest. <laughs> okay, but speaking about <sighs> Gai's area of interest, did you see the fashion at the big Ambani bash? Yeah, I wouldn't call it fashion. Oh. oh. <laughs> Who are we talking about? Give us names. <laughs> no, it's just I don't know that kind of. style is just not something that appeals to me personally like it's too over the top over the top for me not in not are you talking about the ambani family specifically or everybody, everybody who attended yeah so it's just i don't know but who do you think was the best dressed among the among the worst they all look the same to me it's just gold and silver no i mean i mean silver. i'm not talking about just the family i'm talking about like no, everybody in the same like but I, i couldn't stop ogling at the jewelry that The Ambani family. Oh yeah, didn't she have like a huge stone, like an emerald? The the emerald was the size of my fucking forehead. <laughs> yeah, like she has like M one driver strength for her neck, bro. Like how, it's huge. How it, much? How much do you think that was worth? I know she has a mirror of paradise ring, which is fifty two carats. So it was around six point one million dollars, I think, when she bought Cheap. it. Um. Cheap. <laughs> um. The, the jewelry is mind yeah. I was blowing. mainly looking at the jewelry because all the outfit looked the same to me. It's just like gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver. I think that was they had a theme or something yeah, like that. Probably. But but I I liked the family's entire like outfits and the looks and stuff. But the jewelry is what just what I couldn't look beyond it. What is the daughter's name? Um, Isha Ambani. Did you see what she wore? The blouse thingy that uh, I think it was Tarun Taliani. It was made by individual like brooches. Oh yeah, no, it was Abu Jani and Sandeep. Ah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's basically this blouse for her lehenga is made out of jewelry pieces, like they've like vintage sewn stuff together. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was. I was feeling so sad yesterday that in this lifetime I don't think I can ever beat them in net worth. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Because now I, I believe can't in all of us. I can't believe in all of us, but not that to ex- that extent. <laughs> yeah. It's like every time you open Instagram, you were transported to Jamnagar. Yeah, and he made <laughs> uh, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> dress up. <laughs> I you made Ma- everybody. I think, I think Mark Zuckerberg looked really cute in the video. He was so cute. <laughs> I love that. There's this one clip clip of him being so fascinated by Anand Tamani's watch. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh shit, I should get this too. <laughs> I, you know, I was. Uh, he's like, I'm. I've never been into watches, but now that now that I see this one, <laughs> rich people problems. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh... But it was such a massive wedding. They spent. But I feel like I feel like the highlight of the whole thing was uh, Rihanna. Rihanna, yeah. Did you see the video where she was going to twerk and then suddenly she's like, "Fuck, I'm in Jamnagar. I should not." But twerk. she did though. She yeah? did twerk. She was yeah. doing her own thing. She's like, "I don't care." But I, I'm Rihanna. I, I didn't think her performance matched up to the hype. Like, yeah, I mean, I she was like, like having fun. Yeah. And after getting paid like nine million dollars, she got. Uh, she yeah, she didn't. Radhika, she was like Radhaki, barefoot. Radhiki, whatever. Ra- 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 Radhiki. Radhiki. <laughs> Avanti. No, but I would <laughs> assume that. You'll be a little more professional and like at least learn the name of the person you're performing <laughs> for. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure she was stoned or something. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like Radhiki is such a good name. Yeah, you name your daughter that. <laughs> but I've Radhiki. But I've also been watching, the way, like my reels are full of 
wedding content from their wedding mm. or pre wedding or whatever there is pre wedding and there's this video of radhiki just going she's talking to a kid have you seen that video oh my god wow you know what i kind of jay shri but she's so cute in that i kind of had a crush ek but it was like it was imposed babe? upon me like i didn't have a crush in the beginning i never thought she was going to look it but when i saw 5000 reels but she's she's i pretty was like she's cute she's very pretty she's yeah. like krishna lagi chi krishna jaise lagi chi ek jo hai chi be tran tran i don't know what this is <laughs> and there's like 5000 different angles of the same thing yeah, is this is her talking to child Yeah. So basically they had this event where they were sort of it's like a you're giving everyone food. Mm. Um so she was serving a child who was dressed up like Krishna. So she's like, "Wow." Wow. Oh. Krishna lage che. Like it's all in Gujarati. Like you look Krishna? like Krishna. Oh. Damn. I feel like Anant lagta ho to kind of jealous of the dude. She's so cute. Okay, calm down, dude. She's married. <laughs> that's that's true. Imagine them in bed and he's she's like Krishna lage. Oh my god. <laughs> God. I don't know why. Okay. Why does everything have to lead to the bedroom? What, that why not? <laughs> okay, valid. <laughs> you keep this in the bedroom. I don't don't tell us. <laughs> But yeah. No, she is she's pretty. I feel like she's she's You know what, who I feel is also really cute? Um mm-hmm. Akash Ambani. Okay, why? <laughs> no, I don't know. He's so cute. Like the way he looks. He's like a he looks like a 22 year old. This is the who? so there are three siblings, right? There's Akash and Isha who are twins, and the one who's getting married now is Anand, the younger one. Oh. oh, so the wedding is not over yet. No, that's the. This pre-wedding. was the registered marriage. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> the ceremonies will be done in July. I don't know why I have so much Damn. information. <laughs> I don't know. I was so it's like, it's not like, interested in this it's wedding. Like, it's like that uh, meme where the Will Smith and uh, Jar. Uh, What is it? Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada. 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 Ah! <laughs> Pinkett Smith. Okay, I call it Jada. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> the money so, when you had to come out, Jada. So yeah, so Jada, so like the, the meme is basically everything you know about this family was was against, against my, my will. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's true. Uh. But you know, I've met Akash Angmani once. Like, really? I kind of hung out with him. <laughs> is that why you find him cute? I don't know. He was, What I mean, did you I, I, do? I so this is. Wait, this was 2007, so I must have been. So I think he's my same age. He's my same age. <laughs> um, so I was. No, I think 13, he's older than you, but yeah. I was 13, 14, so he was probably like 15, 16, mm. or maybe the same age. No, he's older. I'm telling you, yeah, he's, he's older. older. Okay, so yeah, so we had gone to. So I had a friend who is like super rich, and he is besties with uh, Gautam Singh Anya, who owns Raymonds. So this, we were in Dubai. So he picked us up from the hotel, and he said we are going on a yacht, and we go. I don't know who the fuck Gautam Singh Anand is at this point because I'm 13 and I don't I care about. Don't this. <laughs> <laughs> he owns Raymond basically. No, but is he like famous? Famous? Yeah, he's super famous. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. He's the dude with vitiligo. Oh. Like the really famous he's guy who loves who cars. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, um, so we go. This is right in front of the Burj Al Arab, and that time Burj Al Arab was pretty new. And there's this huge yacht called the I think it was called Ashina A S H E N A, and we went on the so to get to that yacht, we had to take like a speedboat, and then on the speedboat, uh, the instructor or whatever the guy was like, "Do you guys want to go banana boating?" And I don't know what the fuck. So it is me, Siddharth, this friend of ours, and two of his other friends. So I don't know what banana boating is, and I, I was at this point petrified of fucking water sports. So everybody said yes. So I had to get on the banana board, and banana board is something where you just hold on to, and it's tied behind a uh, like a speed speed it's board. It's like a tube. Yeah, and you're just holding on, yeah. and the whole point is that is you're like flying. Is it like a kayak shape thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that, but you're sitting on top, and you're holding on to this one sort of uh, thing in front of you, right? So basically, yeah. the jet takes off, and you're just like holding yeah, on. just holding on to okay. it. And the whole point is that the speed board goes like this and like that, so you get flung yeah, into the ocean. Yeah, yeah, thrown off. So I got flung into the ocean three times, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm fucking petrified. <laughs> and finally, we reach the yacht, and suddenly I'm seeing somebody who has vitiligo for the first time, and he's like surrounded by women, and like I'm already scared after the whole. I thought I was gonna die in the water because of this banana boat, and I was like, fuck, I'm gonna die on this big ass yacht, and this yacht was insane. And he was surrounded by like twenty women, and like there were some fifty guys, and yeah, it was like a proper. Damn, he was yachting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then 
um, then my friend is like, let's go jet skiing. And I was like, there is no fucking way I'm ever getting into this water ever again for any kind of sport. So I said, I'm just going to sit on the yacht. And everybody, all the kid, all the kids are like, you, you're such a pussy, bro. Like, and my cousin was also like, yeah, I'm also going with them. You're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just sitting here, and I'm looking in a, like at them jet skiing and having a lot of fun, and I'm still scared because like I'm in, in this environment where I'm like not very comfortable. And suddenly there's a dude sitting in front of me, like a nice, sweet, chubby boy, and he's staring at me. I'm staring at him because he's also not jet skiing, <laughs> <laughs> and they were making fun of him also. So, um, he's like, hey man, so I said, hey, I, I said, why aren't you jet skiing? He's like, I'm just super scared. I was like, oh, fuck me too. <laughs> and then I was like, uh, what's your name? So he said, Akash. I said, oh, my name is Sharon. He said, okay. And I said, where do you live? So he, he just did this and the Burj Al Arab was right behind him. So I was like, okay, that's fancy. Must be some rich dude, I guess. That's what you I thought. You said that? Or no, no, no. I thought about it in my head. And then he was very sweet. Like, we had a long conversation and he was super sweet. And then he's like, okay, dude, I need to go. Like, a very soft-spoken guy. He's like, okay, dude. Because the other kids were kind of mean. And they were also, like, wealthy. So he's like, okay, dude, I need to go now. Uh, but you ended up there through... Because of my friend. Like, okay, I had a friend okay. there. And then he's like, I need to go. So I said, okay, bye. See you. And then the moment he left, my friend, who was an asshole to me all this while, came running to me and he's like, Dude, what did he say? I'm like, he didn't say anything. We just spoke about normal stuff. No, but like, I'm like, he didn't say anything. Like, we were just talking normal. He's like, do you know who that is? I said, I don't know. His name is Akash. <laughs> <laughs> he's Ambani's son. I was like, fuck. Well, I know him as Akash. <laughs> yeah, I know him as Akash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I ever bump yeah. him, I'll tell him the story. You'll remind him. Yeah. And if he doesn't remember, <laughs> he remembers, I'm sure. What, I'm sure he's do? telling his friends no, the same story. No, he, I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's telling his friends. The same story that yeah. I met this I saw dude. this guy, he <laughs> was <laughs> not rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not rich. <laughs> what a sweet chap. <laughs> he's petrified to go jet skiing. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. And then I've seen Gautam Singhania several times after that. But I, like, I'm forever scarred by that image because he looked so scary to me. Like, hey, hey, Vitligo is normal. No, it's not about Vitligo. Like, that's okay. Because I, I didn't even know Vitligo is a thing. Oh, okay. So I thought this man is like incredibly fair. Like, I didn't even know that he is mm. Vitligo. But just the way he was, was like, ooh, uh, like, it was creepy. Yeah. Not creepy in that sense, but like, like I was such suddenly in such a new environment and like partying in girls and I'm just 13. How old is that guy? Who, my He's friend? old. He's like... Ah. Oh, you, you're talking about the friend or Gautam Singhania? No, Singhania. Gautam Singhania. Gautam Singhania is my dad's age. He's 60, 65. Yeah, he's 60 now. So, he must have been 40 then. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. But, um, I've heard these guys are all very sweet. The Ambani dudes. The Ambani dudes. Yeah, <laughs> Ambani dudes. <laughs> yeah. Have you had other incidents like this where you happen to speak or hang out with like a famous person and... I mean, famous p- people, yeah, but not like, not like this kind of stature. Because, yeah, not like this kind of stature, no. Yeah, I was, I was once in this, uh, I don't know if it's called a coffee shop, but there's this place called Kitchen Garden in Bandra. Oh, this is such a funny story. Where, <laughs> like, the rich and the famous come to eat salads. After their workouts. After their workouts, <laughs> yeah. They come, or they have, like, meetings where they talk about, like, life. Oh, I'm going to my summer house in France. <laughs> like, those are the... Those are all the conversations you can hear. That there's place. those people and then there's Aryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then there's Aryan and me. Uh, so, so one day, it was a Sunday, like afternoon-ish time. And it was so packed. And I go there every day. Like I used to eat there every day. So it is so packed that there's no place to sit. And it's a very tiny place. So there is this one area where you can s- It's like a waiting area. Like nobody ever sits there. But because I came in and because they see me every day, they're like... Uh, you sit there, we will put a small table for you and you can eat. Yeah. So when I'm eating, it's like there's a table right in front of me. I'm almost like I'm in that table. Okay. So it's kind of weird. But I'm just like eating my salad, having my drink and then I'm watching something on, on, on YouTube, on my phone. This is which year? This is 2017, 18. 2017, December. And uh, so I'm watching this interview which Mama had sent me about uh, Shahid Kapoor. Yes, I'm watching this and I'm like, ha ha ha, he's so funny. And then I'm eating, I'm eating, and then I look up. 
Kailit shayad ka bol. Copy paste. Like I was so shocked. Like thank God I was wearing sunglasses that time because he I he was in that table in front of me. So sure. there was somebody else when I started watch and then they they obviously left yeah. and somebody else came and sat and there was him and he was talking to some girl and I am like literally on that table and he's just sitting there and chatting mm. with her and I was like fuck this is crazy. Damn. So, <clears throat> so, but I didn't say anything. I, just, I mean <laughs> I just turned around and said good video bro. Oh, good love video the, bro. Love the content. <laughs> One time watch. It's <laughs> like same to you bro. <laughs> I remember meeting um Vishwanathan Anand once. Oh. But I, That's a weird flex. No, it's not a flex, but it's just like I was so young, I didn't grasp the enormity of the but person that he was. But you knew who he was then. I mean, I knew he was like the uh, whatever grandmaster or whatever, but it was chess. So he's not as hyped as yeah, other yeah. sports like legends are. But uh, he was it's like you're meeting like your dad's colleague at office, <laughs> like that like kind of yes, vibe. Yeah, it's like a chill vibe. chill is an understatement like it's just yeah. like i don't want any importance um sort of a situation but very sweet okay what are the top 5 people you would love to meet in your life and have a conversation mm. and with that conversation i was going to say a story but thanks <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry oh but you tell us your story then <laughs> no, we'll I'll do let's, this let's do this and I'll, i can go back okay so five people okay or three people Three people three. is good, yeah. Okay, three yeah, people. five is too. Yeah, they are all four with the mouth. Three, three, three. Dead or alive, or just alive? Let's do alive. Let's do alive. Dead, okay. you can't speak to anyway. That's gonna be weird. As in, like, as in, if they weren't dead, no. No, they are yes. dead, no. Hypothetical, no. Okay. Okay, okay. No. Okay, no. alive, alive, alive. alive, yeah. alive. <laughs> oh my God! No, I'm shivering now. Shall we uh, go first? Yeah. yeah. Um. Shahrukh Khan, then three oh. people. Shahrukh Khan, Shahrukh Khan. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Ronaldo in it. I've got uh, Shahrukh. Okay, I'll just answer the fucking question then. Shahrukh Khan for sure. Ronaldo, so. Um, But Ra- Ronaldo, you want to do more than talking? <laughs> <laughs> All these people, I do want to do more than talking. <laughs> uh, I want to meet Rahul Dravid. Oh, that's a good one. And uh, I want to meet. I want to meet Usain Bolt, but I've already met him. But like, I want to like be, I want to meet him. This is like not a, a flex section. Yeah, no, it's just like, oh, <laughs> this is just um, say the names. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is the cutest story actually. That is one of the cute, like it is one of the cutest moments of my life. Um, like Usain Bolt was, this was at the peak of his powers. Okay, and I love this man. Like he embodies that sport. Um, this was two. One sec. This was two thousand thirteen. This is after he has broken all the world records. He's Olympic champion. He comes to Russia for the world championship, mm. and you—it's like a party when they are there because like the Jamaicans are always partying. And we found out from my dad's friend that he's living in this hotel, which is very close to our house. So this friend of my dad's went there, took a photo with him. So I was like, I can't miss this fucking opportunity. Whatever happens, we have to go there. So before the race, me, Papa, and Aryan went. to the hotel 7th floor and there there is security but like it's not that much of security so we went to the 7th floor and we sat there in the couch and obviously if you if you look like you can be a like be a guest at the hotel nobody will see anything so we were just sitting there well well dressed and then he suddenly his coach comes out glen mills and then he and his teammates come out and he they're just like lazily walking and we were like i said can i take a photo he said not before the race I'm like what an asshole. <laughs> okay, and he left and I think I didn't ask and he said that and I was like what an asshole and then we were like kind of like irritated about that. But in hindsight now I know why he would do that. And then we went so we were supposed to watch the race. So we mm-hmm. directly drove to the stadium, watched the race. He won obviously. And that was insane to watch because it's the first time like when you see it in person it's different. And then we were like, you know what? Maybe we should try one more time. <laughs> so we went back to the hotel, and we reached the same hotel. hotel. Yeah, we reached the hotel before the Jamaican team could get back to the hotel. And by the time you reach the hotel, all the fans know that they're living there because mm. they're all crowding outside the uh, hotel. So we quickly went in, and uh, me and Arjun and Papa went. To, me and Arjun went to the seventh floor. No, me, Papa, and Arjun went to the seventh floor. So we're sitting there again on the couch. Now I have. I know everything about this guy. So we are sitting on a couch like this, and there's an opposite couch. I can see his dad, his mom, and like It's his really friends. Creepy. 
because I have read like every autobiography, every book, I have, every video, everything. So I'm like, fuck, that is more. And this, they are like politely looking at us and smiling, and we are smiling at them. But it's like a, <laughs> it's like that's qu- it's a little cute bit of, moment. Yeah, yeah. A cute moment. And my mom is a sort of person like she has always told me that no matter who she meets ever, she will never ask them for a selfie. Like she will never like she's that ty- type of a person, right? So she was waiting down to tell us when Usain Bolt was going to come up. <laughs> She in the hurry and the hustle and bustle forgot to tell us. She got into the lift with him. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, so we are so we are sitting like this. They are sitting like this, and the lift opens here. And then he like people walk in like this. Lift opens, and suddenly my mom walks out. Then you say Bolt walks out of the lift. And my mom's like, "Do it right now! Do it right now!" And we suddenly get up, and then we run to him and he's like, "Can we take a photo?" He says, like, "Of course, man, of course." and uh and we take a photo with him and he's super sweet he's talking to us and he's super sweet and everything he's like uh, did you like i said we were at the stadium and he's like did you guys enjoy it and then it was like very sweet and um he said okay guys thank you so much for coming and seeing me and stuff and he like shook our hand took a photos and left and he's walking away okay? he's walking away <laughs> and his mother has seen everything which is happening <laughs> so the mother points at you Yus- looks at mama his mother usain bolt's mother looks at mama points to usain bolt like while he's walking and saying that's my son <laughs> and mama <laughs> they don't want to do so she points at me and irene that's us my son <laughs> <laughs> and then they started laughing and it was such a funny cute moment you didn't say allist i'm still confused sharukh khan for sure I don't know if I want to have a conversation with other people. Can Maybe. Yeah, I want to meet. Just want to fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know mine now. Uh, t- what's yours? What's yours? Rihanna, cause through Rihanna, I can technically meet uh, Asa Brocky. So that's one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's David smart. Beckham. That's a good one. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, we get it. Um, and uh, Steve Carell. Oh, nice. I love Steve Carell. You know what we're saying? Yeah but you know I want to like her Shahrukh Khan thing yeah. more than the conversation it's, it's like so a physical aspect of the conversation yeah. <laughs> like he's beautiful to look at too yeah. like and I also don't know the sport so mm. we wouldn't have anything to talk about <laughs> um yeah so I mean I think Shahrukh Khan for sure for me uh maybe Neeta Ambani just to see what's up uh ah. her jewelry her jewelry <laughs> <laughs> and uh Yeah, I think that's about it. Let's do, no? Yeah, I can't I don't I can't think of anyone else. I don't want to meet anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just mean, want to meet these two. No one really intrigues me, I feel right now. I would mind meeting Kanye West also. Oh my god. Of course, but I would what do you talk to him about? Also, you wouldn't have to talk. You just have to ask yeah, him something. He'll talk for yeah, like five hours. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I don't. Yeah, I just want to hear him talk. Like, like his vibe is just—it's like a lot of things together. So it's just as much as I would want to talk to him, he'll be very one-sided, mm. <laughs> which is fine. But I'm also scared. Oh, I guess Nadal. Yeah, Nadal is. I would one. love to meet Nadal. He's so cute. He's so cute. <laughs> he's so calm. And he's so like well-mannered. Yeah, why not? You met him. I mean, no, like he needs. <laughs> he's read his book again, <laughs> oh. so he knows everything. <laughs> yeah, like he's scared of the dark and. Yeah, you're really scared of the dark. That's crazy. Yeah. And most people are. Yeah, but yeah, like but you don't like imagine someone era. like so accomplished will have fears like these. But like he's supposed to be a warrior, and that's crazy. Mm. He's scared of the dark. Nice. You've not like so he's mostly met like. international celebrities have you met anybody like on the international level international level i i mean i like i don't really think i've met anyone uh, that's what I was, i was saying not of that kind of stature no but like i mean if you consider people who've accomplished a lot i think the most uh the biggest person i've met is vishwanath anand i've met like actors here and there uh, because a lot of them used to come to ot and shoot mm, yeah, yeah, yeah for like ads and stuff So I met like Preeti and uh um I met Amisha Patel and all of them but you know I spoken to Mammootty over the phone. <laughs> What really? <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> I didn't know it was him. 
so my my you were like incredibly <laughs> rude that day <laughs> no i just i don't know i was just like oh okay but then okay so halfway through i kind of had my doubts but i'm like mm-hmm. no way it's him so my dad's a photographer so he mainly does weddings but he also does like certain events and stuff according to what people call him for so he was getting into the shower and he's like the i have a very important call just be around the phone in case i'm still not out yet you will have to talk so like okay like what should i say like no just say he'll call you back or something so like, okay perfect i was in like 6th 7th grade 7th i think and i'm waiting for this call and then this guy calls and i said hello there's no hello it's just mohan and all mm-hmm. my dad's name is mohan i said like, oh. uh, yeah he's in the shower kulikana and then he's like okay tirichu vilikan pari cuts the call and i'm just sitting there i'm like i know this voice i know it's from somewhere and then i'm just sitting there sitting there sitting there and he, my dad comes he's like bricho i'm like yeah and then he has like this grin on his face he's like ada ara nariyo like do you know who that is it's like no it's like that's you just spoke to mammuti and i'm like what the fuck did you just say to me <laughs> you should um you should tell us about the dulkar story Dude, yeah. this is such a funny story guys uh, <laughs> you know how fashionable guy you were usually right <laughs> this happened only in the recent years <laughs> i think this was in 20 I want to say 16 hmm. and I was like in deep depression I barely had hair the hair I had was half blue and this was when I used to stay up all night sleep all day no job nothing still figuring out what the fuck to do this is after nif yeah, yeah I, I had dropped out and everything yeah. how how did you think dulka salman was I'll I'll get there <laughs> <laughs> so this was when uh, mamuti used to stay in panpali nagar okay So my dad was like so I was getting to bed like at 6:30 7 in the morning he's like uh, are you going to sleep I was like yeah it's like no come with me so I was like okay it'll be like some round uh, around uh, this thing panampli nagar so I'm just wearing like my like one home wear like shorts and t-shirt that's it and uh, I was like okay and then he goes around panampli nagar and then he stops in front of mamudi's house it's like okay like usually he does those trips to like deliver albums or photos or what not so i'm sitting in the car so he goes inside mamudi's house and i'm like ah, okay maybe just to give something i don't know and then he comes back full grin again and he's like come <laughs> i was like no <laughs> like come i'm like fuck no <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even Dude, I was I had like snot on my t-shirt. Uh. Like it was just like home wear. Like from crying from previous night and it's just like previous night. Yeah, and <laughs> just like gray shorts, it has paint on it because I used to I was just painting at the time. And I still had paint stains on my hand, like on my forearm and I'm just like fuck no. <laughs> you didn't even tell me to change like the basic decency and he's wearing full shirt. this white half sleeve shirt and pants and all this well. my dad mm. and i was like no and then he's like come oh, and then he's like come 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 and then i got out and then there was like this weird security check thingy like two bouncers we get through security like an airport and then we are at the door and then he rings the bell by this time my throat is still dry talking about this but i'm just like shivering cuz i i mean i was like okay probably mamudi is there cuz why else would my dad ask me to go in mm. door opens and it's dulkar salman <laughs> and i look at him and i remember going like uh. <laughs> and he had just woken up like his eyes are slightly swollen but he looks so handsome he smells so nice <laughs> and then he's just like and he's like very mel- well mannered he's like talking to my he's like hi he even though what i was 27 16 how old am i 21 21 he thought i was in school no, so 21 24 yeah, yeah so he thought i was in cuz i look like this he bent down to say hi to me like i'm a child which i was just like ah. <laughs> and then everything was in slow motion and i remember him he, he's just wearing track pants and like a gray t-shirt He had like one hand in his pocket. And he's like, "Oh, Viru, irku, come, please." Damn, that's please. a lot of details. I still remember it like it was yesterday, and I remember being like, "If I get five seconds with him, just five seconds." 
<laughs> like, I really want to know what happened. <laughs> like I, I remember being like, "Acha, can you please go away for can five? Can you leave? <laughs> <laughs> can you leave for five seconds?" And then he he comes in, and then he's like, we are entering. I don't remember saying anything. I remember being like, uh, and then my dad was speaking for me. He asked for my name. I obviously didn't say it because I couldn't speak. So my dad said it again. and then he's like i'm so sorry i have some work to do i'm i just have to and he didn't have to say that he just went he could have just fucked off he like addressed us and he like he asked for juice or something and then he went up and by this time i'm already done cuz i'm like i look like this and he made eye contact with me <laughs> he must be really nice <laughs> <laughs> then it's like a huge hall so at the corner of the room and I'm still standing there and my dad is like little away from me and I'm like I'm not I'm not entering now I'm not entering I'm not going inside and then again like batman from the corner of the room ah oh, moha viru and I'm just <laughs> like <"Ugh." laughs> what is happening <laughs> and then I just like I remember the last time I hid behind my dad I was 5 I was just holding on to him and I was just like hiding behind him and then like Mamuti being Mamuti he was like cracking jokes and he's like because I had short hair he was like oh mohana angutya narnila and all that ha 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 and i'm like you can say whatever man i don't care you mamuti <laughs> and then i just sat there drinking orange juice and grapes and nuts in the morning wow so, since that day gayu has dressed immaculately <laughs> yeah, every single any but oh, that's not the grapes and nuts he wanted to have that day that's that's really not he's not even joking i remember kept i kept looking up the stairs will he come down will he come nope <laughs> but that sandalwood trail he left ah <laughs> <sighs> it's like i can still smell it like i've only met like i've only seen mamuti once but the man is so charismatic dude it's 7 like... am 7 am in the morning he was well fucking dressed and again he also smelled great yeah. crisp shirt bro like no wrinkle like i love watching his interviews like he's so genuinely funny and he's like yeah he's so charismatic he has like super charismatic and like i remember once in panipunagar he was shooting for something and then <coughs> he saw like four or five of us standing and then he gets into his uh, suv and then he he's driving past us okay and we are like oh my god it's mommy <laughs> and the windows are down so he's driving past us and the last moment he gives us a look the s- small smile and he just drives <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember i didn't talk to my dad for a week <laughs> i still haven't forgiven him for that <sighs> and he was like grinning he's telling the story to his friends he's like yeah she was wearing like home clothes <laughs> <laughs> that's such a funny story <laughs> <sighs> if i get one more chance <laughs> nice yeah durga we have saved the spot for you anytime you want to come Guy who will beat me <laughs> for being on the same couch. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. one day we'll get him. I mean, fuck Guy who, but he will go yeah. crazy. Yeah. I love like to fight for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone loves Dulka so bad. As much as Guy. I doubt it. We should actually have a battle. Battle, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a roast battle. Whoever yeah. wins gets yeah. to meet. <laughs> Do you guys uh, hear about the story coming out of Jharkhand where a Spanish woman and her husband were traveling and she was gang raped by like seven people? Yeah, yeah. It's gruesome, it's honestly, to say the least. I uh, mean, it's worse if you're. It's worse either way, like whether you're tourist or whether you're from India. But yeah. this is like it's all I see in my feed. everywhere like gang rape gang I mean, rape is just you see it on your feed but do you also feel mm-hmm. unsafe while you guys go out like especially at night and stuff yeah i've not felt safe in years if when i'm like walking alone even anywhere irrespective of how safe you say it i'm always i mean i'm not speaking for every woman but i'm on i'm always yeah right? i'm always anticipating like if i'm alone i don't even dress the way i can or i want to i'm always calculating everything people around is anybody following because i've been followed before i've been molested before on the road so it's just it's just never i never feel safe unless i'm with somebody yeah so. and i think that that um that sense of being aware becomes higher in some cities more than others um like for instance delhi bangalore uh you're just more like aware because the, the, i have never gone to bangalore and felt like 
I can do whatever I want. Like I can yeah. maybe have a couple of drinks and it'll all be okay. Like every time I'm like thinking about drinking, I know I want to be surrounded by a lot of my friends so that it's more safe than if I was just, just with my girlfriends or whatever, right? Yeah. Bangalore, I don't know. Even the last two times I went recently, I was just like this place is not fucking safe for women. Like it's just so unsafe. Like small things like uh, my friend Kripali and I we were in the auto. and we're on a bridge we're going quite fast mm. this car was coming opposite mm. was like full of boys like four five boys and it's like when you pass on the road moving vehicles how like it'll be like 0.5 seconds right in that second this i don't even know how he saw us he literally as he was passing us he like winked and i was just like how do you even <laughs> go to that extent to like harass women like i don't i don't get it yeah no it's disgusting like i i remember like when this was when i was i mean and there are multiple events yeah. um where stuff like this has happened but this i remember so vividly it was in kochi itself i was i think in 11th or 12th standard and we were in matancheri um so there's a jain temple in matancheri yeah. and we go there so I, for some reason my parents were still inside the temple i said i'll go sit in the car and i'm sitting in this car with my cousin and i see across the road there's this man who's literally like masturbating and What? making insane eye contact like this old guy okay like i don't even know how he fucking got it like erect he's that old um it's disgusting because he's staring down he has this smirk and he's just going at it on the fucking road like it's it's like a public place so what did you do nothing i mean at that point you i just assumed i guess this is normal or whatever like um someone would have done something about it if it was so wrong i didn't know wh- like what to sort of do yeah that's another thing when these kind of things happen obviously now when you sit and talk about it like yeah you would shout at him or you yeah. would tell somebody but you go into absolute shock Like yeah, you're, you're paralyzed for that you're moment. You're fully paralyzed because you're seeing something like this so openly, yeah. and no, it's violating. Yeah, and I think back then I wasn't as aware and as strong I as as I am right now. Mm. Like today, if someone tries to pull stuff like that on me, that is it. Like because I know what my rights are. I know what process I need to follow because I've been a part of that system. Um, but when you're not a part of that system. I mean even when you're a part of the system it's hard but when you're not it's a little harder I would say yeah when um, it like genuinely depends from person yeah, to person yeah from person to person right like I remember this once again like and I consider Bombay to be an extremely safe city um just because of the kind of like hustle and bustle it has right like no matter what time of day you will find so many cars on the road so many people on the road so you would assume that there's a little more safety um again I remember we were in a uh, cosby in colaba and it's like basically it's like the street with like a lot of shops mm. right um and uh, we had this delegation from uh, harvard come to uh, zaviers in bombay and we were just showing them around and stuff i remember i was walking co- like through cosby with two three of these guys from there and i got spanked i turned around and it was an, again an old man and i assumed okay it must have been my mistake or whatever so i was just like it's okay whatever i turned turned back and started walking till one girl a random person she's like what he did was not right i was like okay clearly it was on purpose because she saw him do it so i walked back and i was like dude ha- like don't you fucking have some shame like what is your issue uh, like full on confrontations happening and he's like no uh i did it by mistake i was reading i didn't see i was like i know people have seen you do it on purpose full denial game and then it, it's just like after a point how much will you argue with someone right because it's my word against his uh despite like how many people would have seen the incident so after a point you're just like it's not worth your time i don't which yeah, is like, disgusting because i mean you would want to take it to an extent where this person feels apologetic for what he's done um and that he doesn't so have the courage to do this again to someone else but it's just sad because i like i know as a lawyer who's been working in the women empowerment and child rights space that the stakeholders 
make it so hard for anyone to seek some sort of justice that you literally are just like i don't know it's just it, the the process makes you question why you're doing it you know it's so yeah. hard i know i don't i generally don't feel safe anywhere when i'm alone like whether i'm traveling anywhere cuz even you you take for example i'll tell you a place like a temple you would be like oh it's a calm yeah safe place the last time i went to a temple was when i was in the 8th grade the last time cuz i was groped inside a temple i was a child groped inside a temple right in front of the nada like we were praying and i got groped and that guy kept fall and it was just me uh, my mom and my granddad and i was so small i was in shock i didn't even know what was yeah. happening right to say this thing and you go into like you shut down and this guy just kept following wherever we went and that's the last time i went to a temple i mm. like mentally can't go to a temple just yeah that's what i mean I, again like things make so much sense now yeah. but like i think every woman at some point has experienced some level of discomfort and it's just after a point at least for me i've become so numb because i it's just like it's like an everyday occurrence like i remember this happening something like this happening to me when i was a child like i was i think maybe 7 8 years old and we used to go for handwriting like you know cursive writing yeah, classes yeah. and there was this um, this the teacher uh he used to have a fancy pen okay uh his name is leo he used to have a fancy pen and i was like very fascinated i was like oh i want can i write with this pen he's like no you have to first give me a kiss only then will i give you this pen so and what the f- yeah and when you're a child you're just like okay i guess it's fine i mean this is also how predators work how old is this guy he must have been 30 something i was 7 basically a pedophile yeah and uh, so it, it, i mean obviously when i'm 7 i'm just like and he's a teacher so you would assume that he can't do any wrong um stuff like that so it's just disgusting actually it's like horrible. anywhere bro like forget outside Uh, occurrences even within the family oh. it can happen i remember there used to be this statistic that uh, the ncrd comes out with statistics um on violence every uh, year or every few years and at one point the statistics said that 90 approximately 90% of the times the perpetrator of the crime is known to the victim so it could be family it could be friends it could be um colleagues of the parents but they are known in some capacity yeah. and why that makes it worse is that the person is then afraid to sort of incriminate yeah because there is a personal connect right it's also when it's within the family it's not very easy to first of all it's not easy to go up to somebody and say hey this happened to me yeah. especially when you're a child one to when it happens within the family there is a huge border which is trust among the adults right mm. so when you go and tell something like this to say even your own parents they wouldn't believe it yeah, cuz yeah. cuz first of all it's so like i don't i wouldn't blame them but there is that naivety that comes with oh we are a family like obviously these kind of things will only happen with strangers but yeah. which is and not true at all it's not true at all yeah and also when it's within that circle of people who know you it's not a one time thing yeah. the occurrence happens repeatedly because often times it's like oh if you tell on someone i'm going to make your life worse yeah so especially when you're very young like yeah. i went through sexual assault from the ages of i don't know i was younger than 1 till the 6th grade and it was by my first cousin So it also when you're growing up when like when you're introduced to sex like that at such a young age your entire world is changed mm. like you know how kids are innocent that is gone yeah i had like a filter where i could see perverts on the road like i could see how they would look at my mom or like any adults with me like that filter just comes on and the world is much more scarier like that trauma i, I mean obviously that trauma doesn't go away so when it happens from a young age like like what you said when a family member is sexually assaulting you that is systematically assaulting you from 
that age from a young age till you're in the sixth grade like your brain chemistry is changed also they have a hold on you where they can threaten you which i have been and things like oh nobody's going to believe you so even if you say you will only get blamed for it so a yeah. lot of things kept like gnawing at you yeah and f- so what did you do finally like how did so i uh in the 6th like grade like i'm saying like for you also like what did you do and like what would you advise people who, who might be going through the same situation or as have so i have like tried telling my parents but when you're so young your vocabulary vocabulary to communicate such things is very limited so i couldn't even tell them properly so when i say things like oh hug kiss they'll be like oh he's your brother so you're also like is that normal cuz i remember this is so fucked up i'm sorry but growing up i remember hearing stories from like my classmates oh my cousins did this did that and i'm like their stories are not matching with mine this is weird so like you like the whole relationship thing kind of switches in you like how is this normal like for the longest time i thought it was normal that's how fucked up it was so um I did try telling my parents it it didn't go as well N- not because they didn't believe me at first I just didn't know what to say uh, then I told few of my classmates when I was in the 5th grade and they're the ones who told me oh this is not normal this is not good this is fucked up you should tell your parents again but by that time I had shut down like for a few years in terms of communicating because I was genuinely scared as to what how they'll take it or what will happen So I think finally it took me couple of years like I was 23 when I finally told my parents and it was obviously it was really um what do you call it dramatic and there were a lot of emotions involved and you know family kind of broke down and obviously my uh, parents go through guilt you know when i'm an only daughter so they went through that guilt of like for the next few years cuz they were like you know we thought cuz i wouldn't blame my parents for this at all cuz they were just very naive about this and i feel like this happens in most families so i wouldn't blame my parents for one second but finally when they knew it was it was heartbreaking obviously cuz it took them a while cuz more than the anger towards the other person it was for them it was like how could we not protect you yeah we failed you they had like a guilt thingy but uh, the thing is um in such situations i have also unfortunately heard that parents don't really respond to these kind of things especially when it's within family well they mm. might ask you to maybe don't mention this yeah cuz you know this person can't know this person can't know that that is when it's fucked up and luckily that never happened with mine um those kind of situations genuinely scare me cuz even now i think about the fact that if that had happened how it would have broken me altogether cuz already i'm going through this trauma i feel like if my parents ever told me oh don't tell people or you know ignore it that would have broken me mm. um so that happened one i mean for people who are still cuz i went through that tra- trauma a lot for me what helped is i did find a friend who unfortunately went through the same thing so talking to somebody like cuz it it won't hit the same when you're talking to like suppose if i'm talking to you you guys about this obviously it helps but there are a lot of things that go through your mind mentally that only somebody who's gone through the same thing will understand because it's a lot of very deep deep dark dark things that can alter your brain brain chemistry so a lot of thought process goes through it especially it's if it's something that happened through the years right because it happened for me it was like when i was growing up which was a very integral part of my childhood so for me what helped is that and secondly and most importantly was therapy therapy genuinely helped me cuz yeah it happens to you there's no you know going back but uh, i think i did therapy in 20 um 2021 that was when i finally you know came, came to like a like an understanding of it finally maybe some kind of a peace that i achieved was through therapy um because i don't think anything else would completely help you heal there is no completely healing there's no forgetting but i feel like therapy is very very important but 
I understand that because for me it was very very hard to talk about it especially when you're talking to a stranger because let alone when you talk to your friend about it it's hard enough but uh, if you cross that bridge it can do wonders to you mentally yeah no i mean i agree because again everyone in some capacity has gone through this and i'm not just talking about us women i know there are men also who go through this right um but what's very important is the first response yeah because that changes the way you as a person who's gone through this will deal with things like you said right if your parents first response was like okay hush hush you can't talk about this yeah. to anyone your ability to get over something like this would be very very different yeah cuz you one you already have trust issues yeah. two you will fully shut down cuz you have no what do you call it like a like a went to kind of you yeah. know let it out yeah and obviously education is important especially when it comes to stuff like this because like people need to be trained on how to respond to someone who comes up with this kind of information because literally what you tell someone changes their perception their game entirely um to the point that you may not want to report it again all of this is your decision at the end of the yeah. day but it is important to report it is important to take up um the fight against this crime because you want it to stop you don't want that person to have the ability to do this to other people yeah, as well yeah the way you reciprocate like even if it's just listening just do that yeah. cuz it's very important to hear hear those people cuz it would have been so hard for them to just open up about Correct. it cuz i know it was for me I, especially the initial stages cuz i remember telling few of my like people i knew when i was a child cuz but i remember thinking i am telling somebody who's the same age as me they might not even understand what i'm saying yeah. so at least i knew that because i've had experiences where they like they didn't even understand what i was talking about which is fine cuz you're telling your peer who's yeah. like what i don't know 10 11 years old but when you're telling an adult or somebody who's like i don't know slightly more mature or Supposed whatever it is supposed to have more yeah please hear them out cuz that is very important yeah. yeah how you respond is very very important correct also unfortunately the environment we've all grown up in there's a lot of shame that comes along with just accepting that something like this has happened to you which is what we also need to change right like a woman is more than her vagina a woman is has more to sort of offer um in life which is why like and i say this fully well knowing that this sort of opinion is not the majority opinion but if it you it depends on where you're coming from also yeah, yeah yeah no but like if you look at the studies that have been done to understand why rape occurs um there's the the theory has gone through massive shifts right initially the crime would occur because the woman was considered property of the man right whether so like it's her marital, father yeah. whether it's her father whether it's her husband whether it's her brother she's property of the man so if they want to inflict injury on the man they will do it by damaging or hurting the woman yeah right then there was a period where they would medicalize this occurrence and say there is something mentally wrong with the man that is why they're doing this so the theory has shifted but the one cons- consistent thing that has been studied is that the reason why it's such a powerful tool for the perpetrator of the crime is because of the value that is attached to the purity of the woman yeah right so that's why the education bit is so important um but again like i said it's such a sensitive topic to broach because literally what you say to a person who's gone through this will impact them and change them forever so it's honestly it's the it's 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 just it's a very dark um situation to be in and i don't think there's anything any of us can say that will help you entirely um because everybody's experience is different yeah, right like what guy who's gone through if i have gone through it my experience may be entirely different my response to it may be entirely different um and that's okay 
everybody is entitled to feel the way they want to feel about it uh but just know that like you're never at fault right even if you're in a state of unconsciousness or you've had too much to drink it is still not your fault that these things have happened to you yeah it doesn't matter your age whatever it is cuz yeah. as a child i used to blame myself for the things that happened to me yeah. as a child so you can imagine what adults would feel exactly. or like any yeah. age any whatever it is yeah it is not your fault if somebody touches you without your consent yeah so any kind of touch if you are uncomfortable you are uncomfortable that's yeah. it don't question it don't overthink it that's it period yeah, yeah. consent is consent whether um again like i said right even if you are drunk and this has happened to you it's not because you were drunk it's because the other person doesn't believe in a thing called consent right so never blame yourself for what has happened um it it's not your dressing it's not your state of mind it's nothing it's not your fault which is very important to understand are you guys okay <laughs> yeah i mean i think i yeah i've developed a very <laughs> weird mechanism to deal with these things but i guess again like what works for you works for you right? yeah like so. i couldn't talk about things like this without crying until therapy like even if i didn't want to i will just break down so mm. that genuinely helped me so yeah no and also like i mean aside from my own personal experiences when i was working with majlis the legal center i would see women so what is majlis a legal center do so majlis is a legal center that helps you sort of it takes you through the process of dealing with sexual assault, sexual violence, domestic violence um and it empowers you to sort of take your life into your own hands. Um so we basically used to give women the support through the entire process from filing a police complaint to the entire legal process. We used to give them support. Um and I would see women of all ages come to file not maybe not even file right come and inform us that okay this is what is happening to them back at home or this is what has happened to them when they were at work um i've seen infants as young as 3 4 months being brought in with their mother because they have been abused um children who are just 2 3 years old um it's it is honestly like when you're working in this environment you need to become a little numb um because you can't be emotional at that point right because you want to service them to the best of your ability so for me i've reached the stage where i've become mechanical in the in the sense that if someone gives me this information i'm like okay these are the things you should be doing but again it is your decision at the end of it whether you want to not report whether you want to just improve your um life by talking to someone about it like th- in terms of therapy whether you want to uh, you know whatever approach you decide to take um i don't even know what i was saying like i'm no, so just, lost but yeah no so mainly it what she's what you're trying to say is basically the fear is what stops us from telling people yeah it's the fear it's either you society being judged, or you being yeah, yeah blamed. which is common i'm telling you i kid you not the number of judgments i have read where the defense has just gone on to shame the victim blame the victim and try to say that the whole reason this has happened is because of you um is insane like it's it's astonishing how far we've grown as a community and yet how we've not grown at the same time um but i don't know i feel like however pro, pro in direction like the direction we're going through towards progression i feel like we to for women to achieve that i feel like we'll take like a few like more years as not even a few more years it's a generational change that yeah. needs to occur and i know i know that there will be comments that say oh but this does not only happen to women this happens to men as well yeah, what 100%. about what about the false cases like i get that argument so many times i'm sorry the laws exist because the probability of you being in a position where you are vulnerable is way more than when a person is using the law to their advantage okay this law is not meant for them it's meant for the people who are actually even if it's one person who's truly telling you that he have been abused 
that person needs protection and that's why the law exists women at their workplace have a specific law because if you look at the number of women who are harassed at work from people who are in positions of power it is abnormal it is it is something that cannot be okay in any situation right you need the ability to go into your workplace without having to think about x y and z person harassing you it's just the bare minimum so yeah i mean it's it's sad that we have this argument that okay there are a lot of false me too cases there are a lot of false complaints but i'm sorry you need to look at the larger picture that shouldn't be stopping you from supporting yeah. people who actually went through shit exactly so that's and like i mean yeah it's just yeah i have nothing to say it's a, i'm very passionate about this topic okay <laughs> i think sharan has nothing to say <laughs> uh so yeah guys if i mean this is for the viewers if it has happened to you sexual violence or assault in any form or capacity if it has happened to you or if it has happened to someone you know uh be there for them be there for yourself seek therapy uh and uh, fight any your kind way of it. help yeah fight mm-hmm. your way through it because like there are three people in this room all three people have had different types of experiences uh so it happens to all of us so there's nothing to be ashamed about or like you know to keep quiet about it or anything so yeah do it at your own pace but do whatever makes you feel comfortable yes and uh this very heavy ending of this episode sorry uh, very heavy yet very important uh, yeah it's as we've all been through different degrees of it yeah. and we've all somehow managed to look at the better things in life um it took everybody different amounts of time to and i know it's different for each individual yeah. some might you know cuz it genuinely depends from person to person and if you've not been okay with it or it's still hard for you it's if it's still a battle for you that's also fine yeah. things take time especially things like this don't blame yourself don't feel bad about it help is there around you yeah and it's never your fault and i think it's important that we speak about this because even if one person takes a positive yeah change from listening to this episode watching this episode uh then we have done our bit so yeah because that's exactly what happened to me like it took one person on the internet to open up about something very similar that happened to me that's when i was fully confident to kind of instead of just telling the close friends i mm-hmm. know that's when i you know that's what helped me yeah so it depends from person to person but do whatever it is that you have to and honestly if you want to talk to any one of us we're available you know our ideas please reach out happy to like talk to you um in whatever capacity possible uh, just to be there with you because yeah. we know how it is um to be on the other side of it so we're happy to be there for anyone who needs it okay guys thank you for watching this episode please like share and subscribe and we'll be uh, we'll be here next week <laughs> because we are here every week <laughs> Fahim say something dude you've been quiet the entire episode Sorry Fahim I didn't quite Fahim shut the fuck up Fahim <laughs>